Hello! In this video we're going to take a look at the very interesting case of HM. Now HM were the initials of this gentleman here on the right hand side, Henry Malayson. And Henry Malayson um, lived in America uh, and in his younger years suffered from very severe epilepsy. This epilepsy was believed to have originated in one or the other of his temporal lobes and it was quite clear that if it wasn't treated um, he would come to significant harm and quite possibly would die from status epilepticus. Since it was known that his epilepsy originated in the temporal lobes a radical therapeutic decision was made and still to this day there is some controversy about the ethics of what was done. However, what was done was that his um, temporal lobes, specifically the hippocampus on each side, were removed. This um, effectively cured him of his epilepsy, but left him with some very severe deficits that we're going to talk about in a little bit more detail. So it's important whenever you're studying any of these cases to realise that um, the brains that we're looking at, so this is the brain of Henry Malayson, this is the brain of HM on the left hand side, these are the brains belonging to real people. So never forget and always see if you can find an image of the real person behind the story because these are human stories at the end of the day. So that's Henry Malayson and this is his brain. Now I'm going to minimise the image of, of Henry just for the time being and we're going to compare this brain with um, a normal brain, a brain that has not been um, subjected to any surgical treatment. Just to give you an idea, uh, on the right hand side we're looking at um, a T1 MRI sequence and we're looking at a reconstruction in the coronal plane, that being the plane cutting the head into anterior and posterior halves. We can see the folded surface of the cerebral cortex and the ventricular system inside and all the white matter sitting deep to the cortex um, in each hemisphere. On the left hand side we're looking at Henry Malayson's brain and we're looking at what is known as a volume rendering of his brain where we have effectively excluded um, the, the, the soft tissues. In fact this MRI was done on his brain post-mortem so the brain had been removed before it was scanned. Um, but this volume rendering enables us to see a three-dimensional view of his brain. And furthermore, it enables us to cut this brain in whichever plane we like. So what I'm going to try to do is, is to slice this brain also in the coronal plane in order to demonstrate to you a level of section approximately where this section has been taken from, from the normal brain, and we can make a comparison. So here we are, I can just grab hold of this slider here and I can cut back within the coronal plane until we get to a level something like where we hope to be. And we can never, you know, it's difficult to make a perfect um, alignment, but these are roughly at, at a similar level with all the caveats um, based around anatomical variation, etc. So if I put this scan into, a, you know, a similar um, orientation, um, we can see, of course, there's the cerebellum visible on the volume rendering, not visible on the cross-section through the head because this is a single slice. But we can see structures such as the cerebral hemispheres. We can see the temporal lobe just here and here on each side. And we can see HM's, sorry, we can see HM's temporal lobes just here and here. And we can see the temporal lobes in the normal scan on the right as well. If we look at the temporal lobes in the normal scan, we can follow them around laterally and then medially as well. And in fact, a large portion of the temporal lobe is sitting really quite deep, quite medial in the hemisphere. Um, and they contain structures like the hippocampus, which we can see just at this point. Compare this slice to the slice through HM's brain, and in fact you see something quite different. Because what you can see here is blackness, effectively, where we would expect to see the medial most portion of his temporal lobes. And in fact, this is the region of each temporal lobe that was removed in Henry Malayson. Now, at the time that Henry had his operation, it was not really understood what the medial portion of the temporal lobe 
did. Okay, people didn't know. They had a, 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 an idea it may be involved with memory, but they weren't certain. However, after Henry had recovered, it became very, very clear that the medial temporal lobe is crucially important um, for laying down new factual memories. Because what Henry experienced was that he wasn't able to learn um, new facts. For example, he had to be reintroduced to the scientists who were stud studying him every day because he never learned who they were. Um, and he effectively um, lived life in the present every single day because he wasn't able to lay down memories and build up his past as we are able to with our normal brains. However, Henry was able to um, make new motor memories um, and this is because his basal ganglia and his cerebellum were both intact. So he was able to um, learn new motor skills um, um, and that was unimpaired. But his ability to learn new factual information was very severely affected. And it is from the case of HM that we now know a lot about how the temporal lobes function, particularly the medial temporal lobe containing structures such as the hippocampus. So thank you for listening to this very brief description of um, uh, Henry Melaison and the effects of removal of the medial portion of the temporal lobe.